Hi everyone, in this uh, second video of our uh, web series, we're going to discuss how we're going to get data from the server. Uh, for those of you who remember, in the previous video, we discussed Angular, we showed some sample of using Angular, JavaScript, and HTML to do some responsive UI, some recompute and everything on the client side. And now our goal is to get everything to run from the server. Um, previously, we have set up this MVC project. And what we've done now, uh, I've done some setup for it to allow it to also use the Northwind application. Now, I won't walk you through it. It is all detailed in the article on our website, devfireflymigration.com. You can go to web and migrated code and have the first article of setting up an MVC project that reuses migrated code. I follow these instructions and set up our MVC project so everything would work. Connection to Northwind database and everything around that. And last time when we, in our last video, we were in this point of, of the code, where we have uh, our uh, small app, HTML and JavaScript. We have our Angular module, our Angular controller, the orders that are detailed by this string, and, and the display that is used like this, which has gave us this nice little UI. Well, the next thing we want to do, we want to go and get these orders from the server. Okay, so let's start doing that. In Visual Studio, we're going to add a new controller, add controller, and we'll choose an MVC5 empty controller, and we'll call it orders controller. Cool. Now, when we determine the controller and call it orders controller, that means that if the URL will start with orders, it will get into this controller, and if it will go to the default path, it will go to this index. Demonstrate that. Let's do a string and say return hello. Okay. We'll build it. Go to our browser and say orders. And we will get hello. Cool. That's simple enough. Now let's start returning data in a more sensible way. Previously, we've seen that the objects that we created in JSON or in Java has an ID property and a name property. Okay, so let's create a similar object in .NET. I'll say public class order, and I'll give it an int ID and string name. Next, let's create some more data here. Let's say that we want to have static order array. And we'll return new order array with two orders in it. Okay, pretty simple. Now to return this to the client, we're going to use a format called JSON. What JSON actually means is it will generate a string that looks like this and um, Java will just instantly love it. So let me show you how we're doing that. We're going to say here, return action result. And then we're going to say, okay, var array is equal to order.mock data. And we'll return here JSON array and JSON behavior equals to allow get. This is some restriction that Visual Studio has put in to make sure that you allow um, URLs of type get to return a JSON. I don't know why you need to put it, but you do. So after we'll build this, if we will call it from the browser, we will get back a result in the format of JSON. As you can see the string here, it's identical to the strings that we are seeing over here. And that's what makes it easy for uh, Java and other tools to use it. And we can also explore it quite thoroughly in the network tab. So if we refresh it again and have a look at the network tab, we'll be able to see that we get it as an array of objects that we can read, explore, and understand. So now that we've got this data from the uh, server, 
Let's see how do we use it in our JavaScript. So now we say scope.orders equals null, and then we request um, Angular to give us another service called HTTP, and we'll say HTTP dot get um, slash orders. Then result, and we we'll say that scope dot orders is equal result dot data. I think. Let's refresh and see what where it takes us. And as you can see, Noam and the yeah, very quickly. And if we put a breakpoint here. And we can in the bug query the scope.orders and since it got id norm and id to yael and we can push this even further. Let's continue the code, let's remove the breakpoint, change the server to have another entry here. And we will get Noam, Yael, and Maya. So this is how we basically get data from a server from our static list. Now, we obviously want to make it more interesting. So let's go and get the data from a database table. OK? So let's first of all save the changes that we've done so far. Later, we'll be able to compare the changes. So. Now what we're going to do, instead of having the array defined like this, we'll say, okay, let's have a list of order, okay? And let's start using objects that we know of. We want to have no string models because we want to use the orders table. And we want to have using Firefly box because we want to use a business process. And we'll say here, var p equals new business process, var o equals new, models orders and we'll say form o for each o we'll say array dot oh, a group order equals new order where id is equal to um, orders dot order ID and name is equal to O dot let's go with customer ID for now later we'll improve on that okay and we'll add it to the array okay and eventually we'll return that array to JSON okay so we've built this code. Let's run it in debug so we can see what exactly is going on. Okay. The website is running, and soon it will hit our breakpoint. We can see that our array has only zero elements in it. If we step in, we'll see that now we are creating the OR object. Our specific OR object has ID and name. Okay. And as we move forward, the array resizes, and we are getting more and more orders in our list. OK. We'll release the breakpoint and let it run. And eventually, we've got all of our orders here. OK. So this is how easy it is to get data from the database, return it back as JSON, and use it on our Angular application which we can see over there. Also, if we'll have a look and monitor it using the network tab and refresh, we'll be able to see that the orders get data returned 830 rows, and we can see them over here and see their details. And you can see how also very quickly it came and went. It was 34 milliseconds to return 800 rows from the database to the server in a way that we can reuse it. In our next video, we're going to talk about sending data to .NET and getting it back from the browser and doing things with it in the server.
Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next video.